Hi everyone, we are Team Potato Fritters from RGS consisting of Zingyi, Sarah, Shutika, and Dikshita. Firstly, we will be sharing our roles in the team and our past experiences. To start off, Shutika is one of our software programmers and researchers. Ting Yi takes on the role of team leader and main software programmer. Next, we have Sarah, who is the main hardware engineer. Lastly, I'm Dikshita, the group's hardware engineer as well as a researcher. These are some of our competition experiences. This is a brief summary of the rescue mission. Firstly, we have to create an autonomous robot which must follow a black line and navigate obstacles to reach the evacuation zone, where it has to locate black and silver balls representing the victims and casualties, and rescue them by picking them up and sorting them into their designated evacuation points. We will be sharing more about our software and hardware strategies later. Moving on to an overview of our robot design. Our robot has a sturdy structure made up of mainly two-point connections. Connecting parts on multiple planes not only ensures that stress is spread out more evenly, reducing the likelihood of localized damage or deformation, but also increases sturdiness of the robot. A frame is present around the robot to strengthen its structure. Secondly, weight distribution is a critical factor considered. To ensure even weight distribution, heavy parts like the EV3 brain was placed further back on the robot with the color sensors and medium motors placed further front. The robot has a suitable weight, not too heavy so it could move about easily, but not too light so it can still pass the speed bumps. The robot has a low center of gravity. By increasing the weight of the bottom of the robot and having even weight distribution, this allows for line of action of CG to fall within base area to avoid toppling over speed bumps. Lastly, the robot is compact and we made use of space between different robot parts to place sensors and motors to reduce the robot's size, ensuring that it could easily avoid obstacles and navigate the playing field without colliding into anything. Using tracks instead of wheels provides greater contact area with the ground which enhances driving force and traction, especially on ramps. Additionally, the tracks connect both the front and back wheels, distributing the motor's driving force over all wheels, reducing the likelihood of any single wheel getting stuck. Flexibility of tracks allow for smoother movement over speed bumps as they can better conform to the surface irregularities compared to rigid wheels. Secondly, we have used large motors to drive the robot instead of medium motors as they are more powerful and able to support the robot's weight better. As for the claw and dispenser, medium motors function faster, allowing for the balls to be picked up and deposited faster. Now, moving on to the sensors we used. The color sensors were placed further apart, such that when moving straight, both sensors will be directly on top of the green squares, allowing the robot to detect full green areas rather than half black and half green increasing accuracy of detection and minimizing false negatives or positives. Color sensors are placed in front of the motors, as this allows the sensors to detect changes in the line's color or contrast before the motors react, enabling corrections to be made in real time, minimizing deviations from the desired path, and improving the robot's responsiveness and accuracy. Additionally, this provides information on upcoming track conditions, allowing the robot to anticipate and proactively adjust its trajectory, leading to smoother and more accurate line tracking. For obstacle detection, we switched from using an ultrasonic sensor to a color sensor due to the EV3's limited ports. The front color sensor can detect obstacles, walls, and color of balls in the evacuation zone, making it much more worthwhile to use than the ultrasonic sensors, which can only detect obstacles. Regardless, the ultrasonic sensor still serves a purpose, by acting as a base to attach the medium motors to. The time of flight is used to track the distance between walls in the evacuation zone and the robot, as well as for non obstacle navigation. This is because, compared to ultrasound, it provides a far greater range, faster readings, and greater accuracy, while still maintaining small size and low weight. Next, we have our claw, which utilizes a grab and lift mechanism, where the less energy demanding grabbing action is performed first, followed by the more energy demanding lifting motion. When the lifting motion reaches its limit, the claw automatically opens and releases the ball into the dispenser. 
Additionally, the claw consists of rubber pieces to increase friction and relatively long beams to increase surface area, allowing the claw to easily grab the ball, even from varying positions. For our dispenser, we used a medium motor connected to two gears, which reverses the direction of dispenser movement. The dispenser functions like a seesaw, tilting forward when receiving the ball and backwards when dispensing it. Moving on to our software design. To effectively track the black line, we implement a PID control system which stands for proportional, integral, and derivative. In our application, we focus solely on the proportional component for simplicity and efficiency. It begins by computing the error as a difference between the scaled green values detected by the right and left color sensors. This error is then used to determine the steering angle, scaled by proportional gain, Kp in this case. Kp is a constant and when increased, it causes a robot to turn more aggressively in response to an error. Additionally, the speed of the robot is adjusted based on the magnitude of the error to ensure smooth tracking, with higher speeds when the error is minimal. The decision to convert RGB values to HSV greatly enhances the reliability of detecting green squares. HSV is less affected by changes in lighting conditions compared to RGB. Since the hue component remains relatively consistent under different lighting, it helps maintain the accuracy of color detection even when the lighting conditions change. Defining a specific hue and saturation range for green allows reliable discrimination against false positives or negatives. We then compare these HSV values from the color sensors with the predefined range to determine if the detected color falls within the green range. Prioritizing hue and saturation over value ensures robust detection, even amidst varying brightness of the green, which is measured by value. Another challenge is that the robot initially fails to detect double green since the program sets a condition for double green true only when both sensors detect green simultaneously. However, one sensor will always detect green first. To solve this, upon detecting green by one sensor, the robot waits and verifies if the other sensor also detects green. If only the right sensor detects green, the robot will turn 90 degrees to the right. If only the left sensor detects green, the robot will then turn 90 degrees to the left. However, if the right sensor detects green first and the left sensor detects green second or vice versa, the robot will turn 180 degrees. For our obstacle navigation, if the front color sensor detects a total RGB reading of less than 25, this means that it has successfully detected an obstacle. It then moves back and turns 90 degrees such that the TOF is facing the obstacle. We then run a proportional control program similar to our proportional line track. However, the speed is fixed this time. While the steer is now based on the error which is calculated as the difference between the target distance of 80 mm and distance reading updated from the TOF. When the robot senses a black line, it breaks from this proportional control loop. Silver as a metallic color typically doesn't have distinct HSV values in the same way that traditional colors do in the HSV color space. However, silver is highly reflective, hence its V value would be very high, helping the robot to distinguish it. Hence, detection of silver line outside evacuation zone is just comparing the V value of HSV detected by the left and right sensors to see if they fall within the V value of silver. If yes, it runs a proportional control program similar to the obstacle navigation to track the walls of the evacuation zone. Via wall tracking, if the front color sensor detects the corner of the evacuation zone, the robot moves back and turns 90 degrees and continues the wall tracking program. This usually gives a sudden higher RGB reading. The robot will then break from the loop when the right or left sensor senses a black line, signifying the exit of the evacuation zone. The process of identifying balls is relatively straightforward. If the color detected by the front sensor falls within the specific RGB range for a ball, regardless of whether it's black or silver, the claw mechanism will engage to pick up and transfer the ball to the storage area. Lastly, here are some challenges we faced during competition prep. Due to our varying schedules, we had limited time to work on our robots. To overcome this, we decided to work on hardware and software simultaneously by building two robot bases one to code line track on, and one to add new elements like the claw and dispenser. Additionally, our team members had varying ages and skill levels. To balance this out, we had a less experienced junior with a more experienced senior in software, and the same for hardware. This way, the seniors could guide their juniors and teach them skills, allowing them to work independently and increase our team's efficiency. The juniors can also transfer this new knowledge into future competitions. 
Thank you for your attention. Team Potato Fritters, signing out.